Hello. Uh, so today uh, we will learn that how we can geocode the data, and also how we can um, visualize uh, the data in ArcGIS Pro by creating some uh, nice charts and also even uh, animation. So the data that we're going to use is from the Gong Balance archive, and we're going to download the the master team uh, records in 2022. So if we go to this website. And then we go ahead and also find out the reports. Or you can see the mass routine records uh, in the previous years. Uh, so let's go ahead and also find out the data that in 2022, uh, which is the table, but we will download this one as a CSV file. Uh, you can see we have the ID, the date of the incident. Uh, we also have the state name, the county or city name. Uh, address and also number of people being killed or injured, um, and also whether or not the uh, the suspect has been arrested. So uh, those three are the new columns that are provided by the uh, this year. Uh, and also we have additional information like operations, uh, but uh, when we download the data, so uh, those information will not be available. All right, uh, so let's go ahead and let's download. Uh, this data as a CSV file and just click download. And then I'm going to go to my downloads folder, uh, so which is where um, the data has been downloaded. Uh, so let's open the CSV file first. Uh, so we need to uh, clean the data a little bit. Uh, so first we can see that uh, we have the, uh, almost the same data set except our last column which is operations, uh, so we don't have any uh, useful information. So let's just remove this column, so delete. And uh, and also secondly, so for this incident date, uh, so you can say uh, it organized like day, uh, the month, and also year, where the month is a uh, string. Uh, so let's convert the format where uh, we are using the short date. So we confirm, convert the date into all numbers, so months, date, day, months, day, and also year. All right, uh, so now let's save this uh, clean data. So I'm going to save as, and I'm going to save to the same folder, but I will call it uh, clean on um, um, balance. All right, and then let's close uh, in the Excel file. So, uh, so now you can see we have the clean data set. All right, so now it's time to bring the data into our uh, ArcGIS Pro project. So let's start an ArcGIS Pro, and let's uh, create a new map um, project. Uh, so this is our uh, map six, and we as we always did, so let's put bring, uh, save the uh, project into our uh, OneDrive folder. All right, and next, we're going to bring the CSV file into our uh, project. So let's close. Um, so uh, again, we go to the catalog, and because it's in my downloads folder, so I go to the computer. And I open expand the downloads, and now you can see uh, the clean down balance data is here. So I'm going to bring that one to my project. Since this is a non spatial data, so we don't have anything that on our map, but we just have this table. Um, so if you right click, and we are able to geocode the table. So uh, let's just try to geocode. Uh, the, uh, the locations of those instance. And so those are eight steps. So let's just start. Uh, first, we need to uh, select the, the locator. So depending on how your account being set up, so you may have different uh, locators. Uh, right now, I have two options. One is ArcGIS World Geocoding Service. And this is not great. So this will cost some credits. Uh, I think for every 1,000 records, it will cost 40 credits. 
And I also have a BGIN. Um, this one, I believe, is free, but uh, um, depending on um, the settings of your account, so you may not have this option. So for our lab, let's try using uh, ArcGIS Word geocoding because the accuracy is very, very high. So let's go ahead and I'll choose that one. And every time when you see this icon, which means that we are using the credits. Uh, so just uh, keep in mind that those services are not free. So if you see this uh, golden icon, let's just go ahead and ask next. Um, so I think uh, now the the all the other options are pretty straightforward. So uh, does your table contains the, the address information in multiple fields or just a single field? Uh, because our data are in multiple fields. Remember, we have the address, the city or county, and also state. So it's in more than one field. And then we just match uh, the field. So address, which is in this address field. That's right. City. So we do have a city or county. Uh, for the county, so I will also bring the city or county to, to match this one as well. And state. So you can see the state match the state. Uh, we don't have zip code, and uh, we don't have a country name. Also, we know that this is in the United States. Uh, so let's go to the next one. And uh, prefer location type. So those are the address locations. Okay. Um, and also output fields. So we want all the fields. So yes. So let's keep all the fields. Um, we can also define the uh, coordination system. So let's. Go ahead and also choose a PCS. Uh, since we are using, we are geocoding for the entire country of the United States, I'm using this one, uh, which I think is appropriate for the entire country. And next, uh, so they do ask, okay, so where are the data located? So because all the data in the United States, so we just choose the United States. And the uh, the address type we are we have the the address so let's just use address and of course you can expand uh, if you have uh, like a uh, specific type of address you can select those uh, corresponding type but I just keep uh, check all of them and let's go ahead and also so finally and we can we are going to review our settings so input data locator which will cost the credit credits and also the input fields the output uh, one more time i'm using this one uh, as my pcs for the output and that is in the uh, country united states all address category addresses uh, so before we start, uh, so in this version of ArcGIS Pro, so I think this are nice that you need to check how much credits will be cost. So you need to estimate the credits. So let's just click. And now you can see uh, it will cost like uh, 25 or 26 credits. Uh, so if you're fine with that cost, and then you can just go ahead and also run this analysis. Remember, once you click run, and you will use those 26 credits. So let's click run it. And let's put that one. So now you can see uh, it's starting. And it's pretty fast. And uh, now you can see this is the report. And you can see on the background, so we do have those points that are located. Uh, we can see we have, I have more than 600 points that in identified. And uh, there are uh, four points or four locations that we cannot find that. And we also have 20, almost 30 points that uh, uh, Object Pro uh, is able to identify those points, but uh, then there might be similar locations or um, they have the same scores so that you may need to manually decide what are the exact locations. Uh, so if you want to do that, you can just start rematch. Uh, but since I'm fine with these results, I just click no, so I don't need to rematch. So I will click no. And now you can see uh, those points are identified. And if I 
go to map and also use its plot and also let's say we check uh, one points in Harrisonburg okay and we can see that the location the address um, and that is in Harrisonburg and uh, we have a lot of information that from the geocoding uh, process uh, however if we go to bottom so we have our or original data so let's see our uh, incident ID and the date uh, and also the number of people that could be injured or killed and also whether or not that suspect has been killed or injured and also has been arrested okay so those are the information that we have and by the way so the data is so the geocoded data is also saved in this uh, our file geodatabase which is the default geodatabase of our access pro project all right, so now we have this um, data. So let's say we can also run some very simple queries. So uh, for example, let's say we open this table and we can see we have uh, again 645 records being um, geocoded and comparing to our original data, um, original data, okay. That's also uh, 645 records. Okay, that's nice. And I think we can now remove this uh, CSV file. Okay, so now let's say we want to query the data. Let's say do some uh, non spatial queries. Uh, so, for example, let's say we want, I want to know that how many uh, mass routing events occurred in Virginia. In, uh, so, because I know that there's a column that contains the data of Virginia, so I just go ahead and also do a, a query by attribute or select by attribute. So I click select by attribute and I choose the points as the input data. Uh, so in ArcGIS Pro, you can, if you are familiar with SQL, so you can uh, do a SQL selection, so you can know the SQL syntax. Uh, in most cases, actually, I think. You can just build the, a simple query by using uh, those options. Like uh, here, I want to see that where the the state is equal to uh, Virginia. So, and then I think, uh, of course, you can add additional clause. I see uh, where the number of uh, Injuries is greater than one, etc. So let's just keep this as simple as it is. And let's say valid. It's valid. And now let's click OK. So now we have created uh, a non spatial query where you can see all the points that in Virginia are highlighted. So if you zoom in, you can see those are highlighted points. And again, if we go back to the attribute table, uh, you can see right here we have 20 uh, records that have been selected, which means that there are 20 instances as in Virginia in last year. And if we switch to show the selected records only, and now you can see those are the records that in Virginia. So we have something in Shadville, Richmond, uh, etc. And you can see that the people being killed or injured. Uh, so those are the records I think Virginia. So um, that is a non-spatial query. So let's close that one and I'll clear this selection. So sometimes you may uh, so see uh, if you have the attribute table does not have the the information that you want to query with, and we can also query by uh, spatial data or query by uh, locations. Or query by geography. Uh, anyway, so um, so let's say we let's first let's download a, a reference data. Let's go portal, and we're going to go to the living antlers, and we're looking for the uh, USA counties, and we're looking for the the boundaries. So let's drag the boundary to our data set, and let's just go ahead and also so. Uh, 
let's say we want to select the Richmond. So we'll go ahead and I'll select Richmond. Okay, uh, so now the Richmond has been selected. And now uh, I want to make a query. I want to see that how many instances occurred within Richmond. Okay, so within this highlight area. So that is a spatial query, or that is a query by uh, location. So let's say we go to the select by location. And now uh, we want to see, okay, so the input feature will be the, uh, the town violence data. The selecting feature will be the USA counties. And because we have Richmond that has been selected in USA counties, so actually only Richmond will be used as a selecting feature. So let's select the USA counties. And you can see that the input has one selection, which means that is Richmond. So Richmond will be the actual, the real selecting feature. And selection types, we want to create a new selection. Of course, we can also do like see remove from the current selection, add to current selection, etc. Uh, you can also specify the spatial relationship. So we have a lot of types of spatial relationship. Um, and I will keep using the intersect, which I think will be fine. And now if I hit OK. Uh, so as you can see that those three points are selected uh, from the gun violence data. So those are three events that occurred in Richmond. So again, let's go to the attribute table. And yes, we do have three records that have been selected. And if we switch to the selected records, and uh, we can see that those are all in Richmond. Okay, so that is a, a selection uh, by location or the query by location. So, all right, uh, so let's clear this selection again. Uh, let's remove the, the county map. And uh, next, we're going to see some uh, visualization functions in ArcGIS Pro. So, uh, so if you right click our gun balance data and you can see that we can create different type of the charts so like a bar chart, a line chart, scat plot, uh, etc. So there are those are the charts that are available. So let's do just two very simple basic charts. So first let's create a bar chart. And for this bar chart, I want to see that, okay, so the, the number of injuries and also number of people being killed in different states. Okay, so, uh, so the category will be like the state name or the state. So now we can see different state. And the values, I want to calculate the total of the people being injured and not the people being killed. So people being killed and the people being injured. All right. And let's also sort the data. So let's see, oh, we can sort data by y axis descending. Okay. And now we have this uh, line uh, bar chart where we can see that uh, Texas has uh, uh, the highest number of people being killed and uh, I think this is Illinois has the most number of people being injured uh, because of gun violence in 2022. And if you zoom out, okay, and see on the top, we still have a map. And if we check this extent, which means that now if you zoom into different regions, this chart will be updated. So for example, uh, if I look at the, the West Coast, okay, and if I look at the East Coast, uh, so you can see that the chart will be updated. And uh, similarly, so if you just check selections, and now let's say we want to select, just select some random points, and now if you see enable the selection as a filter, and now you see that the selected points, the bar chart of the select points will be uh, displayed. So uh, that is also very nice. So let's clear the selection. 
and on check set one. Uh, we can also rotate uh, the chart or uh, we can export the chart. So if you want to export this chart as a, a PNG file, so you can just export that as a graphic. Okay. And then you can export that as a PNG file. Okay, I'm going to cancel that. All right. Um, and also all the charts that we have created will be uh, showing up here as well in the table of content. So let's close this chart. But just remember that the chart, if you want to view the chart one more time, you can just uh, reopen it uh, from this table of content. So let's create a second chart. And this time, I want to see that the number of people being injured and killed over time. So uh, I will go ahead and create a line chart. And for the line chart, uh, the date, I will choose the instant date. And for the aggregation, and I will choose the total. And again, I will choose the number of people being killed and not injured. And for the time interval, so let's say I want to see by months. Okay, so every single month. And of course, you can enable the field by extent or field by selection. And we can see that. Um, July is announcing that we have the most number of people being injured. And um, October is announced that we have the most number of people being killed. Okay, and now you can see the line chart uh, is also now showing up here. So uh, if you close line chart, if you want to reopen it, uh, you can just reopen it from the table of the content. Okay, and finally, uh, so we can also uh, create animation. Uh, so to create animations, the first you need to design your your map uh, uh, a little bit. So let's say that we want to change the symbology of the map. So I click, I select the, the points, and here I want to change the symbology. Where I want to change the signs, uh, which I want to show that the signs is based on the number of people in. Here. Uh, I can also change the colors, but I will leave that as, uh, as a yellow color. Uh, you can also choose a different uh, classification method. So I will use a natural break, which is the default one. Uh, you can also change the number of classes. Um, normally, we don't want the number P to be greater than 5. Uh, we can also change the size. Uh, so let's see if you think uh, 18 is too big. So we can change that into, let's see. Uh, uh, 12. Okay, so uh, let's also go ahead and we'll change the base map. So we, uh, let's say we want to choose a darker uh, gray base map. All right, and uh, to create animations, we need to enable the, uh, the time. So let's go ahead and, and we'll also go to the properties and time. Let's say we uh, filter the data by attribute table, and also we see uh, based on this instant date, we can that is from the January 1st to uh, December 31st uh, of 2022. Okay, all right, and finally, uh, let's go to uh, view and let's go to animation and let's add uh, animation, and we need to insert our uh, time slider. So that's why we need to enable the time. Uh, so here, there are several things that we can do. So uh, for example, we can uh, set the entire duration, let's say to be uh, 10 seconds. And uh, let's also in add a title. So for the title, let's call it um, violence. And let's change the uh, the size to be uh, smaller and also give it a white color and also close and also commit. Um, so we also need want to show the title all the time. So let's drag that the entire time. Um, and we also want to add the map time. So let's add map time. Uh, I think we just need the start time. So let's just delete the 
the end time and well, we put that one to be smaller as well and close and commit that change uh, we also want to show uh, the time for this entire uh, 10 second all right and uh, so now you can preview uh, this animation okay so and uh, that's uh 10 second and uh, so if uh, you're happy with this animation and you can just go to export and export movie and now you can choose the format do you want to export the video and also up upload to youtube um I'll, on twitter or just a high uh, definition of the video or grf so let's say we want to use a grf so i select grf and then we choose uh, where i want to export and they also answer at the advanced uh, settings so i just leave that as default then export and this will may take a uh, few minutes depending on, uh, uh, on how fast your computer is so I will pause the video here and I'll... all right uh, so this is uh, the final result uh, so you can see that we have the title uh, we have the, uh, the, the instance and also we have a time